Hello and welcome. Happy Fridays. Hope you guys are doing well. Out there wherever you are, you made it through another week. Today what we're going to talk about is the 3540. We're going to do a buyer's beware of this. We're going to talk about why um, a customer might want to buy this tool, but also why it might not be the right tool for everyone and how some customers get misled um, into buying this not realizing what they're getting. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to have, we have one question from the question and answers from this week. So we'll go over that and uh, jump into it. So let me uh, start off with this tool. It's the Fluke 3540 FC power, uh, phase power monitor, three phase power monitor, I should say. And it's a pretty cool tool. It looks a lot it's the same um, hardware package or form factor as our 1730 series from Fluke. Now, why would somebody buy this? Let's start with the positive, why somebody should buy this tool. The 3540, what it's designed for is to give you continuous monitoring. So that it's gonna be connected to a Wi-Fi connection at your facility or whatever. It's gonna be able to reach out to the cloud and it's gonna continuously stream data both voltage, current, power factor, harmonics, the things that it monitors. And it's going to continually stream that to the cloud and you can set your own parameters or alarms if it goes below a certain voltage or below a certain current or above a certain current or above a certain voltage. You can set triggers and alarms and get notified and you can actually see it on your phone and you can look at it anywhere in the world because it's cloud based, right? So it's a pretty cool tool for that. Um, and that's really the main application. Now, one thing you want to be aware of is this is really just a power logger. This is not going to really get you into power quality. It's not going to be looking for fast acting events. It's not going to capture events. Now, obviously, it would trigger um, an alarm if it goes below a voltage or above a certain voltage. But this is a slow in, in the as we think of the world of power quality um, application or power quality analyzers or power quality loggers, power quality tools that are out on the market. This is a very, very slow power logger. Um, it is not going to be able to catch fast axing transients or fast axing um, wave shape deviations. Uh, it's just not fast enough to see that. You might miss something. But if you want this to be more of like a uh, think of this as replacing your electric meter somewhere, but you want to see if a phase drops out and what time that was, and you're okay within um, a second or so of when that happened, then this is going to do a great job for you, and it's going to notify you anywhere in the world. Um, so one of the things that people don't realize sometimes when they buy this is the first year you buy this when you activate it you get a year subscription so that you get the service of that cloud-based system so that you get notified and you can stream to the cloud however after that first year you need to pay for it from fluke and a lot of customers what they end up going online and they look for a three-phase logger and they want to buy the cheapest one they find and they find this one and they buy it and they don't realize after one year that software goes away, number one. And number two is this, you cannot log internally on this tool and get it off yourself. You have to use the subscription software. It has to be streamed. So this becomes a very, very expensive paperweight if you're not going to pay for that subscription moving forward. If you want a tool that you're going to sit out there, it's going to log internally, and then you're going to go pull the data off and then take it to your computer, make a report, and maybe you're going to sit this in an office somewhere for another six months and then pull it out in a year or whatever, and you might only use it a couple times a year, but you see yourself using it for 10 years, and you don't you can't justify paying for the subscription, and you don't need that remote access. I would highly recommend you look at the 1730 series or the 1770 series, one of our other power quality tools that's going to give you higher performance, it's going to give you event capture, and it's going to log internally. Um, it just hurts my heart when I get called and uh, I've gotten calls from customers and they didn't realize what they were buying and now they have a very expensive tool that they have to um, go through some hoops when all they wanted to do is log locally pull it off on a USB stick and go put it in their computer. Now they have to have a Wi-Fi connection to get it off and 
not only that, they have to pay for a subscription. So year two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for the life of this thing, you have to have a subscription from Fluke. It, it's so often I get called in as a salesperson too late and they already own it. If you guys are questioning whether this is the right tool for you, please call a local sales guy. Make sure you understand what the application is. Go to the Fluke website, make sure you understand what your application is and that you don't buy something you didn't want to buy. The other thing that people sometimes don't realize when they get this is this tool, unlike our other power quality tools, does not come with a case. It comes with a cardboard box. It's designed to just um, go and be in this cloud-based system. We're not they're not seeing it as much of a maintenance tool where you get that tool bag with it. All of the other power quality tools come with a tool bag or a hard carrying case. So you might pay a little bit more for a 1732 or a 1734. It's not much more, but it's almost the, it's basically the exact same performance except it's local memory instead of streaming to the cloud. So just make sure you know your application and you really need that cloud access. And if you don't, Go with one of those other tools. You might be able to get more power quality performance um, and pay for itself over the life of the subscriptions very, very quickly in a couple of years or two. But the other things that are cool about this, just like the 1730 series, it does have a power pack on the back that you can self power off the voltage you're measuring, or you can plug it into an outlet if you so choose. Um, basically the exact same interface, but you do have to connect online. If somebody has this 3540 out there and you go, you know what, I really don't understand how to connect it to Wi-Fi and start the streaming, leave a comment below. Happy to do that. If you bought one of these and didn't realize that you had to have a subscription moving forward, leave that comment below because I'm curious about that. And uh, if you decided to go with the 1700 series, whether it's 17, 7, 1730 series or 1770 series as a result of this video, leave that comment below as well. Um, I love hearing that feedback. Also, leave any questions below because we're about to jump into the Q&A session. Again, I only have one question this week, but I think it was a good one. So I'll share it with you guys. So this was a video I did on, I'll kind of show you, on comparing the uh, 87.5 Max multimeter to the 28.2 and to the 87.5 multimeter. And the question was from William, do they all take the same battery and the same cover screws? So I think he's talking about the battery and the cover screws specifically on the 87.5 Max and the 28.2. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll answer the question for all three. So the 87.5 takes a nine volt battery um, and it is completely different case, different backplate, different everything. As far as the 87.5 Max and the 28.2, they are, they take the same batteries. They are um, three AA batteries. Uh, let's see if I can get it to show. Uh, yeah, three AA batteries right there. I can show it on both of them, maybe. Yeah, three AA batteries. Now, one thing I will note, the, the, you pull this plastic cover off, if I can do it on the screen, this rubber boot, so you pull this off, they both look the same, but I noticed, now my 28.2 is a few years old, but I noticed the 28.2 has Phillips screws for the this back place, this uh, cover plate for the um, fuses and for the batteries, it's one piece, and then it has these Tin uh, T10s uh, screws for this, whereas I noticed the 87.5 Max, which is you know more, it's a newer model than the uh, 28.2, has the. Let me see if I can get that in focus. Has the T10, uh, the torque T torque 10 screws for all of the back plate. So I I don't know if that's true for all the production runs. But I did take these apart and I swapped the plates and yeah, the, the, the screws and the plates, they all thread in and, and they work. You can interchange them. I don't know why you would want to necessarily, but the answer to William, yes, those, those are interchangeable. So 
three AA batteries for the 28.2 and the 87.5 Max, and a nine volt battery for the traditional 87.5. So, and again, that's the final question for today. If you have questions, leave them below. I love answering your questions. It helps me uh, come up with good ideas for videos. And have a great weekend. Take care, guys.